Are you a business owner looking for real advice and input? You're in the right place. From concept to launch to growth, funding and beyond. Welcome to Startup Hustle with your hosts. One once sold a business for $150 million. The other, the author of Million Dollar Bedroom. Here are your hosts of Startup Hustle, Matt DeCourcy and Matt Watson. And we're back. Another episode of Startup Hustle brought to you by FullScale.io. Matt DeCourcy here with Matt Watson. Hi, Matt. What's going on, man? Good. I'm still trying to get that uh, that intro in. You know, they told me, they're like, you have to connect your marketing to your sales. You got to do something to let people know what you do. I said, but I don't want to run commercials, so we're not going you gotta to. You got to follow the policy and procedures. FullScale.io. I was going to say it X number of times. That's what we're going to talk about today. You know, there's some, oftentimes and regularly a disconnect between the world of marketing and a company and sales. They are often two different departments, two different places in the building, two different objectives, two different measurables. In the end, they should really hold hands. And the question is, is how do you get your marketing to turn into sales? Are you, are you good at all that? Well, I don't know. As an engineer, I hate sales and marketing. They always make shit up and then <laughs> sell stuff we don't really have. And then I, I got to figure out how to deliver it. I would have felt better if you would have said, well, I'll give you my answer right after I let you know that Startup Hustle is brought to you by FullScale.io. Oh, oh God. <sighs> so anyway. Lost that opportunity. Sales and marketing, huh? Yeah, just trying to be demonstrative. Are we going to talk about sales and marketing today? We are. Oh, okay. We are. As soon as I mentioned that this is brought to you by Full Scale. Oh, my now with that, I'd say I almost got it all out of the way. Well, I brought some people in that are local to our Kansas City economy and startup founders here. They're from Command App. And so I have the co-founders, Aaron Schweitzer and Brett Davis. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I'm glad Happy you guys could make it. We scheduled this a while ago, didn't we? Mm-hmm. We did. I know. The recording schedules. You guys are busy. I know, man. I know. It's it's my fault. We decided to put this out a whole bunch of days in a row, so we had a lot of interest. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about Command App before we get started. So for those of you listening, Command App is available on iOS, Android, and in the Microsoft App Marketplace, which... I'll be honest, I didn't even know existed. <laughs> Microsoft Store. Yeah. Windows Store. Yeah. So that's cool. But you guys have a really cool product. You guys came out to one of our suite events, and I, uh, you told me about it, and I was like, dude, where was this 10 years ago when I did trade shows? Exactly. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Command App before we get into bridging that gap between marketing and sales. Right. Well, <clears throat> thanks for having us. And what we've, what we've done is... Uh, We've created a platform where businesses can build, manage, and deploy their own apps um, without the need for developers, programming teams, marketing agencies, etc. And they can also work in tandem if you have your own marketing group or internal marketing as well. But what it does is allows you to create apps (coughs) on our platform, launch sales materials to your sales reps in the field, and then gives marketing the control that they need to know that the right information is getting presented. It's in their hands and everything's up to date. So it's really, like you said, bridging the gap between marketing and sales because we always know, um, you know, in businesses, there's always a little difficulty getting information out to your sales teams and then um, with marketing knowing what's being presented and what's effective in the field. So now when you say build apps, though, let's let's be specific yeah. about that, because sure. I think that um, these are marketing apps, meaning like presentation, right. data collection, um, centralizing your sales message. Matt, when you had Venn Solutions, did you guys ever go to trade shows? All the time. They're miserable, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got that out of the way. But with that, um, and especially back in this day and age, you f- would find yourself running for brochures or literature. Well, what I what I actually think about more is my our own customers that were car dealers. Like, customer Ooh. walks into the showroom, and they're like, uh, what do you know about this Ford Mustang? Well, let me get out Command App and show you all the features and specs. Right? Well, you could like, do that now, but back then you couldn't. So, like, when I used to work for Roland, our trade show booth was an acre. That's the size what? of a football field, dude. Do you know how hard, how lame it was? Like on day four to still be running for stuff, but we had so many brochures mm-hmm. and so much crap, we couldn't carry it with us. Yeah. And, or have a different thing about problem. replacing a catalog yeah, for those type of customers, right? So that's part of what you guys do, right? Is yeah. it, are these the apps that we speak of or is there more? 
they are really it's about customer engagement and and this maximizing you know an app if you will or a solution to go after that specific customer engagement opportunity whether it's like you mentioned the catalog a portfolio a full-on sales app to where you're not only presenting things in a dynamic non-linear way but should the process move forward you're ready to then start collecting data and you've got those tools and you're doing everything all that within one place so and it's not just just the point of again engaging with customers on the point of sale, but afterwards, how are you supporting that? How do you so do you help them, them collect leads, leads and everything within the app? Absolutely, that's definitely a part of it. Is and, and they're not just a leads like a you know I always say throwing a card in the fishbowl at a trade show, and the modern version of that is the the scanner, badge scanner, badge yeah. scanner where they're just scanning badges and there's no context to follow up on. When you're using a command app, you're tracking what you're looking at, what you're sharing with. So when you do follow up from those things. The lead has additional information around that. Well, a great example of this is Stackify was at um, the Kansas City Developer Conference mm -hmm. here recently. So it's a trade show for other you know software developers are there, and we're trying to sell Stackify's product. And one of our salespeople did an awesome job of collecting information and scheduling demos. There you go. That's right. Huge. Scheduling yeah. demos on the calendar versus some of our other people. They're like, oh yeah, let me get your business card and I'll throw it in the fishbowl. Like, yeah. yeah. It's the more you know, the better job you do of getting them information and actually scheduling the follow up. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. So some of the some of what you're talking about too is is best done when you are controlling your sales and marketing narrative, and that's a big part of it too, isn't it? Like, like you, you look at especially surge events. Like for I would call a trade show a surge event for most businesses, meaning you now have this surge in in a need for presenters, people to talk to, <clears throat> which often means that you don't have people with the deepest knowledge set. Mm -hmm. Right. And in, in some cases and then also you just have new people. Yeah. So absolutely. like what's what's the value We got of, a big booth like Roland, you gotta fill an acre of bodies to man the yeah man the booth right? well and then like, the, yeah and then the thing too is so you know like for example with that acre and like once again an acre is the size of a football field yeah. like just give you some perspective and by the way I, they have had had bigger in years before that yeah. but they make so many different products and there was so much literature and so many different things and like just the time yeah. like i step counters weren't back then that was like <laughs> probably like a real pedometer yes. but you talk about like just all that and, and then also like now you have someone waiting and like then you come back and they've wandered off. Mm -hmm. They're like 30 yards down the field further. But I think, you know, as for new people and, and especially salespeople, they op don't often, even though they should, often don't have a strong grasp over what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Um, and then, Matt, you, I think you made the, the best point so far was like, how are you completing your sales equation? So there's two different sides of the equal sign. The marketing side is technically the left side of the equal sign, and marketing should equal sales. Exactly. But if you're not making appointments, scheduling follow-up, doing stuff like that, and building that expectation with your potential client or customer, you're not doing a very good job. Exactly. Got to drive next step. What's next step? So, all right. So you guys decide... Now, what is your background before this? Were you guys, you, I'm assuming someone or both of you guys were salespeople that saw this as a problem and you're like, God, there's got to be a better way to do this. Right. Well, you would be wrong. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah, neither of us are salespeople. What we were. Well, you are now, so yes. welcome to the club. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Everyone works in sales. Yep. And that's, that's totally true. And, and I think that's where we came up with a solution and why our solution approaches it a little bit different. We came from a digital media background. So we created this stuff from the marketing side that were tools, or, you know, in, in our 3D animations, videos, slide decks, all kinds of things for salespeople to use. And we were doing that on behalf of our clients' marketing departments. And then we would go to national sales events, trade shows in support of that, and then we wouldn't, salespeople would be complaining that they didn't have anything to show. And, and we, we knew that they had stuff to show because we helped them create it. Yeah, so we really started looking into what is that gap? What's happening there? And then what we discovered was, they're using, the, again, people that either deal with data and just managing those things on, on a kind of a CMS standpoint, or people that are used from the sales standpoint, um, the CRM of, let me just put stuff in files and folders, put it in buckets. And that's the way marketing was sending stuff out to salespeople. And they'd be using other things that would, you know, Dropbox and other, other things out there were just a mechanism of getting it to them. Now... I mean, just imagine the way you guys, if you're like us, the way you label files and stuff, 
It's all over the uh, place. Yeah, I'm poorly. I'm, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to label it separate than Brad. So, so if you're forth. a salesperson out there that is looking for something, you either have to remember what it was called or do a search based on some criteria or just start digging through files and folders. And nobody has time for that, so they just bail out of it. Or they would then hit marketing up and say, hey, can you send us that video of that, whatever, that C25 dig in a hole? Because I'd really like to show that to my client. Well, right, and then so much of that, too, is companies aren't even aren't usually even good at updating their own brochures yeah. and literature. Like, I remember, like, coming back, I'm like, oh, I got one on the last, got, got a brochure on the last product. <laughs> right. They were like, yeah, but I want to buy this one. I'm like, yeah, but this is what I got. Yeah. Another thing, too, so as a district sales manager, I called on accounts that were in 13 different states. Mm -hmm. And in the trunk of my car... <sighs> I mean, dude, I had a bucket. So I had like my road bucket. I actually had two tubs, one of which was just shit that I was likely to forget often. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's a whole different discussion. Like the time I drove all the way to Detroit and realized that I didn't have any dress shoes. Ooh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that happened. But then also then there was the literature bucket. Yep. And there, that was expensive to send. And then quite honestly, like when I moved from Indianapolis to Kansas City, I threw away a lot. I mean, a valuable amount of literature because I no longer work for the company, but the bucket was still full. So mm -hmm. being able to update that stuff, I think what you guys are doing is, a, is an amazing way to kind of create that live funnel as well. Like if I have any kind of sales ability at all, I can follow the steps, mm -hmm. but what are the steps? I mean, obviously the steps are, are in sales are, are pretty basic from time to time, but where do the variants occur? And then I think the main thing that being able to you know, the hardest part of selling effectively is handling objections. Mm -hmm. So if you can, like, as you're moving people through this and, and what, so what you guys are doing is letting you, a, a marketing department take control and structure that narrative. So now the salespeople just are there, you use the, uh, like a quarterback. Yes. And it's like, hey, run the play. Yeah, here it is. We're giving them all the right tools for it. And then to Brett's point, going back, you know, 82% research has shown that 82% of, uh, Trade show attendees are actual decision makers for companies. So if you want to lose out on that opportunity and that opportunity cost right there straight out of the gate, you have 82% of the people that are going to visit your booth actually be able to stroke a check, make a decision, and, and lead that sale forward. And to Brett's point earlier about Dropbox, um, the beauty of Command App and which has been a big promotion for us is the fact that it's all the content is available offline. So I know that Wi-Fi is real sketchy, yeah. real expensive at trade shows. Everything's available offline while you're collecting leads at stores and locally. And, and they charge you money for Wi-Fi at trade shows <laughs> now. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah. How, so how do most people do this today? Is it primarily an iPad and a bunch of PDF files? Is that really the only option these days? Uh, for competitors or competition out there? Yeah, what do you mean, mean if I'm not using Command App? Yeah. I've probably got some PDF files. Yeah, we have limited iPad, limited competition out there that, again, to their and, and And they're pinching and zooming and scrolling and trying to maneuver PDF files right. and try to find the right one. And Yeah. Yeah, and, and there are there are some people that do have some you know competitors out there from a presentation standpoint, but we've got these tool sets that going beyond the presentation. I always say if you show somebody a photograph and that's enough to get them to take the next step, move on. And just show them that. Yeah. But then you got to have the tools to do that. Now we're going to go to a needs assessment form. Or we're going to do a cost calculator. Or we're going to go ahead and do fill out, you know, Th those are all objections. Those are things you have to overcome on the way to actually making a sale that's mm -hmm. important. And like, so does, does what, does your app also like structure all this? Like, so now I just did a cost calculator. I just did like an estimated order. And like at the end, like, oh, they're like, of course, here's your student. Well, I've got to go think about it. Right. Or right. At least yeah. I've got recorded what we talked about. Cause th some of these live events too, you're talking about with with that surge mentality, you're also, mm -hmm. as a salesperson, you can get through talking to a hundred people at the end of the day and mm -hmm. have lost, like if you don't keep track of what you were doing or what you talked about or right. any of that, now you, it's all gone. Yeah, so yeah. our app is tracking everything that's being done. And all the so analytics. it's nice, yeah, afterwards, if I would met with Aaron at a trade show and had sent him some stuff, I would know that on this date, at this trade show, here's what I showed him and here's what we looked at. So it's tracking all that stuff. So. I or my org admin can get online, look at the back, the portal that they have, and see the analytics of what was going on. So that's a huge part of it. The other thing that you brought up earlier, too, was 
um, situational presentations or navigation. The fact that how am I going to engage with this customer? How am I going to be dynamic enough to understand what I need to show them? And do I have a tool that not only is presenting the way that I think it's going to happen, but I can ask them questions. You mentioned challenges or that. You can, you've got templates to where you can build this thing a way that interacts differently and have all those different opportunities in the app. And we've done that for a lot of clients where we sit down where some might just say, oh, well, if I'm talking to an old time customer, they know my product. So I can approach it from talking products. If I'm talking to a new person, then I need to talk challenges first. Sure. And so the way the navigation on these templates work is you start to approach it differently. Mm -hmm. And what works great is the fact that you do have the newbie salesperson that may not, you know, the companies that we handle have complexity on so many different markets, so many different products that they don't have to know everything. They just have to recognize the pattern of how to get to it. And that's where our situational navigation, our expertise in that really shows up. So I can ask Aaron a couple different questions and the app is going to lead me to the products that are going to address the, those concerns or those issues. I think that's another important thing is like, you know, I, every business has a different catalog size, but I mean, some things, I mean, you're talking like hundreds of thousands of oh, SKUs. Yeah. You look at like if you were like O'Reilly Auto Parts or something. We have a client right now that has 22,000 products in their app and it's all local to the device and they can quote directly out of the app. That's a lot. And they manage it just from a CSV file, but, I mean, that's something that... Hey, that's where you got to start. I don't know how else you would do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from having a, a background in affiliate marketing, like some of the things, like, you know, we, we were looking at different stuff that we could market, and, I, and some of those auto parts makers, they have, I mean, literally half a million SKUs. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, how do you even keep track of this stuff, much less how do you... You know, you go to... Well, I'm going to still use the auto parts store, like... And those guys tend to know everything that they seem to know. But how do you, you talk about finding a solution to someone. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what selling is in this day and age and always has been is someone has a problem and it's your job as a salesperson to fix it. But now you're in the business of giving advice, which advice is only as good as the source that it comes from. I mean, Matt, if I started giving you advice on how to write .NET code, would you find me, would you find me to be credible? No. Okay, why not? Is it because I'm not a .NET programmer? Yes. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> you put the colon here. Semicolon. Damn it. Yeah, you failed already. <laughs> you suck at this. I've been reading Baby Loves Coding. Yeah. Which is... Uh, you failed. Algorithm? Yeah, algorithm. That's a, always a good answer because there's only like five total possibilities for answers in that whole book because it is for babies. Um, but, <laughs> but you talk about, you know, as, as a salesperson, you're in the business of selling solutions and offering solutions, but it's impossible to have them all for every situation and, and whatever. So can I also add value added statements in here? Can I say like, here's like five things about this product that are likely to be good. Absolutely. And I mean, benefits, not mm -hmm. features. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you could build an AI component in there that could just reach out and slap people and say, <laughs> hey, look, you are listing a bunch of benefits here or a bunch of features. What are your benefits? So, There's a roadmap. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, tough to do. It. So, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things, and we, and this, we still want to talk about the, the marketing to sales gap, but one of, the, one of the things that is challenging in the world of sales is when you go to a meeting, with whether it's an existing client or mm -hmm. a prospect, you get there and you're expecting one thing. And here, it's just like in baseball, you're looking for a fastball and here comes the curve. Yep. So what are you guys' thoughts on that just in general? Like, I mean, that, that's, that happens. You don't know what questions people are gonna ask, what they're gonna be hung up on, how, they're, how long they're gonna wanna delve on those topics. Mm -hmm. So, so where, do we, where do we end up when it comes to adaptation and ability to be agile? We've got one of our, we have a big medical technology company, we're not at liberty to say who they are, um, that came to us with that exact problem. They had a 150 page slide deck of information that may or might not be relevant depending on who they were in, in front of and talking. It sounds like something I'd like to sit through, <coughs> right, Matt? <laughs> no. <laughs> and they knew that you know 20 minutes to get through that equals 20 slides. How do we whittle right. that down before each presentation that we do? And of course they do their due diligence, they do the research, then they sweat it out the night before, even if they're traveling, of like, okay, are these the correct 20 slides? Right. They get in front of a boardroom full of people, start presenting, and immediately a question comes up that 
in their heads means slides six through ten are now irrelevant because of that question and the ones I took out I really wish were back in mm -hmm. and so that's why they came to us and said here's the different opportunities we we look at and so what we did is sat down and said okay what is the thought process that's happening when you're trying to build out those decks I want to point out that Watson just took a selfie and <laughs> intentionally cropped me out. Cut you up. <laughs> God, oh, the, now he's trying to make up. I see how it goes. By the way, if you want to check out our pictures, we did actually have a first. We we were talking about you talk about adaptation and all right. So so much so much of this too is like, okay, how much what materials do you have and how are you utilizing them? And that's been a hot topic around full scale and. Full scale, once again, fullscale.io. But that's a parent company that Matt and I own that owns some other things, this podcast being mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we look, we have 170 employees, actually 175, and they all represent a skills and availability that changes on, I mean, it can change day by day. So, how do you utilize what you have the best? And, like, for example, we just you actually went live on Instagram which somehow after recording over 170 of these, we, the bright light popped. Hey, maybe we should go live on Instagram and let people see what it's like. So I did like two minutes of that and yeah. you know, I probably need a better camera angle next time. But, you know, how do you guys, w updated materials mm -hmm. and this, this agility, like that seems weird. I would have a hard time, like you gotta probably know the app pretty well to make a pivot within the app or is it more of a walkthrough? I'm a big fan of the walkthrough, like answer these questions and now based on your answers, these are the next possibilities. You're just kind of thinning it out. Yeah, and there's a choose your own adventure aspect to it for mm -hmm. sure. I like I that. Remember those books way back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make those decisions and go. And, and really that is what we do is we, we set it up and talking to clients and figure out what they're trying to accomplish. You know, what typically happens out there? What are the red flags that you need to clear? What are the hurdles that you need to clear with customers? And we've got, like I said, these templates of navigation that we can quickly set up for them. Um, that has that, and what we do, you know, we start, we do a, an alpha, and they start to figure out the patterns that work. Mm -hmm. And that's that we've been doing UX for, oh my gosh, before UX was even at Yeah, I mean, we started out in the early 2000s when CD-ROM and DVD were a big deal, and people were, um, a lot of our clients were mailing out jump drives with um, just random content on it and so we kind of stretch the limits of DVD for a little bit and that's kind of where our UX background um, came from and we've created these apps um, we've had so many people tell us you know even my 80 year old dad can <laughs> maneuver this by I, the way that's a testing point that I that I brought up my dad's only 76 okay. hi dad <laughs> um, my parents have their 50th wedding anniversary this oh, week. Wow. Just crazy, man. Yeah. 50. Yeah. That's unheard of. I know. <laughs> They've been married longer than I've been alive. That's wow. More math. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so when I talk about that testing standard is mm -hmm. like, I, I look at it. Okay. Could a five-year-old use it or a 75-year-old use exactly. it? Like, where are you at on that, Matt? Because like that user experience is is uh, by the way we've been talking about sales for too long so i have to find ways to keep matt involved well i, I was used that's actually a good salesperson I, when he wants i to used be. to joke uh back in the days of in solutions because our our average user was a car salesperson i was like we had to design our software to work for like a fifth grader who was drunk and, had and to disclaim <laughs> that there we go i'm not even going to try just yeah. do whatever you need to do and like if they can use it then we'll be okay well, he said he tried to say that in the least insulting way possible. Yeah. But really, like, you know, one of the things, so Gigabook was the same way as we built it because people would call and they'd be like, I'm not a tech person. Okay, what does that mean exactly? Like, right. you're not a programmer or you don't know how to turn your computer on. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> there's a wide amount of stuff that occurs in there. So, Well, I mean, we all take so much technology for granted, but I got members of my own family that don't have internet in their house. Never used a laptop before. Yeah. Not everybody is high tech, even in these days. So. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to hear more about that. Do you guys know that Matt has three sisters named Stacy? I did not. Know. Yeah. 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 Also another episode. Whole another episode. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We're, yeah. <laughs> I'm intrigued. So I'll some. Tune in so sometimes one. Matt will request suite tickets to the full scale suite at the Sprint Center or whatever, and. Uh -huh. 
I'll get there and I'll be like, okay, I know this is one of Matt's sisters because I've met her before. I'm just going with Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been right almost every time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was funny that day you asked me, like, what's the name of your sister that's coming tonight? And you were like, like oh, Stacy. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> dude, I knew that. I knew that. Okay. So are, can, we, can we talk about, like, what kind of expense you're looking at as a business to get involved here you don't have to be super accurate or we can kind of <laughs> say that's tbd depending on your needs i would assume that someone that has twenty-two thousand literature items is going to be a little more expensive right. than yeah than one other thing and then uh, i mean is that something that because i know people want to know you don't have to tell them right i mean how we break it down right now and the reason we don't have prices on our website is because everybody's mobile solution is different and what we do we really have two steps in the process and that's the um, actual onboarding, and then we have an annual license. So Command App comes with an annual license. When you say onboarding, meaning like to help you onboard your clients, like that's customizing the, it, exactly, yeah, building it. And we, oh, like you build it for them. Yeah. W- okay. So we start out, and we can work if they have a marketing team. We can work with their marketing team on it, but we really put the personal touch to it and do a digital blueprint of what you're doing now. How do you want to evolve that process, and how do we? transfer that into a digital space um, from what you're currently doing, whether it's a trunk full of brochures and pamphlets. and Will you scan those for me if I ask? Uh, there's a cost for everything. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's a one-time fee to be determined based on the, the onboarding. Yeah. Sure, sure, the sure. Content. And, and then the, look, the idea that, that software companies or service companies or any business is just going to do a bunch of shit for free for you. And right. I don't yeah, think right. you have to be embarrassed or like... <laughs> Or avoid that. Like, right. here's the thing. We will do it for you, but we have costs to cover ourselves. So mm-hmm. now past that, is this something that is, in a, I mean, do you feel that this is an accessible price point for the main product that I, do. I would, I would, I would have loved this. I really would have loved this for everything I did when I worked for Roland. And I would have also wanted the salespeople at the stores that were our quote dealerships mm-hmm. to have ac- had access to something like this for all the reasons that we mentioned, for creating a level of stability and control over that marketing message, also updating the materials. Mm -hmm. And then another thing too is like, I would get to some of these stores with my tub and they'd be like, yeah, I haven't had brochures in like a year. I'm like, sweet, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, Yeah, and everybody wanting to go green now too. Yeah, it's true. And and how much money and expense we've seen with misprints and outdated material and all that stuff. Yeah, well, Well, uh, and that was one of the issues we had even at at Vin Solutions is we didn't we didn't have like brochures and all that stuff but if we talk about rolling out a new product or changing our pricing it's like oh how do we train 50 salespeople yeah. on the new price how do we update our CRM system how do we and and we didn't have 22,000 SKUs right, right. Mm-hmm. but if you got 22,000 SKUs price changes sound like a big damn deal oh uh, it is right so yeah. using technology like this enables you to have one point where you can go in make the changes push them out Boom. Yeah. Acronym, spot flash acronym test, Matt. What does SKU stand for? Oh. <laughs> for all the marbles. Wow. Yes, you are also out of lifelines, 50 50s, <sighs> and ask the audience don't leak it. I have no idea. Stock keeping unit. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. It's funny. I used, the term, I used, use. I used mm-hmm. the term SKU for like 10 years and never knew what it was until a few years ago. And then I, I just was found like, out about it today. Reading my book? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. you? Well, actually, I, I did. Yeah, it was yesterday. I finished it up yesterday. So if you haven't checked out Million Dollar Bedroom. Look at that. that. Wow. Look at See? that. Sales Connecting the marketing. marketing. That's Which, amazing. I couldn't tell you how many millions of times I've heard that word. I mean, I worked right. it. Yeah. Yeah. SKU. Yeah. You're just like, hey, what's a SKU? What's no a SKU? What's idea. a SKU? And then when I finally read it, I was like, Oh, wow. I don't think I knew that. No, wow. <laughs> yeah, I learned that when I was uh, um, doing stuff with Urban Necessities. Just goes to show you it's not an yeah, acronym now, it's yeah, a word. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh my God, there's a zillion SKUs here. What does that even mean? Yeah. How to check so, it out. Yeah. Anyway, we need to do another acronyms episode. Yeah, I'll figure so out like a dirty <laughs> version of and that. And we need to have a. <laughs> We did have an acronyms version, and um, I should probably put a disclaimer at the front of it. (laughs) (laughs) It also state that Matt Watson's definition of specific acronyms do not necessarily reflect the opinions, and I don't know. (laughs) Your acronym for ATM was the best. Anytime money? Anytime money. That's not what it stands for? (laughs) No. What does it stand for again? I forgot. The dirty version? No, dude. God, I don't want to get into that. It's uh, an automated yeah. teller machine? Yeah, there oh, you yeah. go. 
That's what we were I, thinking. My biggest one is Nerf. Like Nerf guns what? and Nerf balls. Do you know what that no. is an acronym for? This, no. This is my little party trick that I always have. Yeah, lay it on me because I have no clue. Non-expanding recreational foam. It's wow. Came up with Mind blown. I had no idea that was an acronym. Mind yeah. blown. Yeah. While we're completely off topic, Jeez. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I pulled a mixtape card, and it was a sing-along. Oh, <laughs> will scare yes. all of us from yes. that. So, Matt, I have really good news. The I digital pl- version works? I played mixtape the game and the beta app over the weekend. Did you was, win? Well, no. Is everybody a winner? In my book. Participation trophies. In my book. Have you guys played... Uh, what the hell? I don't even know what this, this is. Gotta be good. Have you guys played next tape? Have you guys played next tape before? I'm gonna read a scenario. Did you get? I feel like you guys prepared and trained for this, but you can't. <laughs> Mixtapethegame.com. So I pulled a card out of the mixtape deck. I'm gonna read a scenario. We're all gonna. I'm not gonna pass on an opportunity to play with four people. Okay. Right. Um, all right. What song do you play while riding Falcor the Luck Dragon? <laughs> First off, who is Falcor the Luck Dragon? That's from the Never Ending Story. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Matt, for clarifying that. You gotta go that. with a band, though. You can't go with the whole entire band. You have to pick a song. Oh, spe- specific song. Don't pick Lemp Biscuit. And you can't pick the theme song of the Never Ending Story. I think that that's fair to exclude. Yeah. yeah. Or, or you didn't fu- know or, Falcor was? Or Don't Pick Fuck You by CeeLo Green. Yeah. It has been bad. used too many times. Who's gonna go first? What song would I play? No. Doesn't Jason Mraz have a song called Lucky? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I, I should know that. I think I danced to it at my wedding. Oh. Quit Googling. Hey, no, you're disqualified, <laughs> dude. You are literally like, see, this is where the app would come in. So any song would work, and I'm going to go with Over the Rainbow. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. I'm gonna go because I completely want to confuse genres and time frames here. I'm gonna go with Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. No, oh, he's stealing good. Quentin's Quentin's juice. Yeah. On a previous dragon answer. Yes. Man, <laughs> you're an imposter. Uh, you brought you go first there on this one. Ew. Just pick a song, any song. This is up for grabs here. Yeah. I have to go heavy metal because it reminds yes. me of the, the heavy metal. Yes. <laughs> yes. The cartoon the movie. The cartoon movie where they're, they're riding. Oh, the that, we're going the all the way into that. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's, that's wow. You're really mind. getting back. We're really showing our ages today. <laughs> First off, even knowing Falcor the Dragon. <laughs> what you got, Schweitzer? Come um, on. You know, oh, you've had all this time. I know. Now you're still thinking. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to put a clock on I'm, you. I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking sticks, a little wheel in the sky. Okay. Is that sticks? Is that sticks? Okay, so for those of you listening, we have four (laughs) terrible (laughs) answers. (laughs) And I kind of want to just like... Or the theme song to uh, (laughs) the movie. (laughs) I feel like this is a situation where the deck should win. (laughs) Like literally like the... Yeah. Um, Anyway, I'm voting for heavy metal just because it's got heavy metal in it. Mm. Come on, pick a winner. This is dragging on. So let's read. We had Lucy in the Somewhere sky. Over the rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere Wheel in the sky. Wheel in the sky. Keep on turning. Yep. <laughs> and what was yours? Heavy metal. Which Matt doesn't know what that he- is. Just any heavy metal no, song. No, heavy metal is an old school cartoon. Yeah. Oh. You can't yeah. pick a whole movie, though. Well, what's the song? Yeah, we're gonna, yeah I can. I'll per- we'll permit it. Heavy metal God, this by is awful. I know. I'm moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> nobody. And the first... Oh, my God. I'm going to just take a picture of this card. I, I didn't know Hang that Falcor gonna... was the luck dragon. I remember never an in-story, but Fail. I know this. Yes. <laughs> I have branded this card. I think it was a great tape. card, but we all just failed. Yeah. yeah. We just got the theme song. I was going to say Ride the Lightning. We're going to go with the uh, theme song from The NeverEnding Story. No winner. Is the correct answer. You guys will forever live in shame. Yeah, that's pretty bad. As mm-hmm. being the first guests. <laughs> to fail at mixtape. I mean, I failed a bunch <laughs> yes. at mixtape, but our guests usually don't. Yeah. Yeah, you lose all the and time. And then you bring the guys in from Command App, and they just completely just destroy mm-hmm. mixtape. We, like we don't have, even know music. We <laughs> might not even play again. It's possible. Well, that was the last game of mixtape ever. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things. We, we always ask everyone, what's something that you guys failed at along the way? That, Or you can also go with something that you completely overlooked, and then later we're like, oh, wow, we probably should have considered that. The ability to play mixtape? 
<laughs> I will accept that as an answer. That, that was their first big mistake. Technically, that is in the past. Perfect. So, yes, Perfect it does time. qualify. It happened. Uh, I'd say, um, you know, we, we really... So right now, currently, we're starting to focus um, specifically on manufacturing, chemical, ag companies. They have a complex message, complex product lines. We kind of went the smaller route. Yes, the platform can work for smaller one, two, three-person companies, but it's kind of built for a bigger release at, at most of the points in our launches. Um, but I think we we focused on some of the wrong verticals coming out of the gate and thinking that this was an everything-to-everyone situation. Yes, it can be used by everyone, but is it always the right We've talked about that a lot. The total addressable market, feeling like when it's ma- when it's massive that you've got the world in front of you and then only to realize, oh, wow, not the case. Yeah, exactly. You've got to be a little more specific. We need to have another episode about recurring themes because, like, that is something that, like, so many people, and I'm guilty of it, too. Like, I looked at Gigabook. I'm like, anybody could use this. And mm-hmm. I was like, later, I was like, oh, shit, anybody could use this. Where do I start? Yep. Yeah. you got to pick a niche. I think there's create that a niche. In- the other side of it was being really conservative because um, we spun this out of, of another company, so we saw the opportunity. We were just, again, it's... Conservative in what regard? Uh, the Midwest mentality of we should have went after money right away. Once like investor money? Investor money and, and try to really throw some gas on the fire earlier than, than what we've been doing. Here's a thousand um, supreme dollars to help with that. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> not out of the gun. Yeah. Perfect. You guys were going to fire the money gun. Until no <laughs> one won. Oh, God. Oh, man. So, okay. You know, that, by the way, once again, another recurring theme, a lot of people wait too long to raise money. Mm-hmm. Done it. And that was Have you done it? One, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it ties oh, into what God. Aaron was saying, too. Just we, we spent so much time doing a feasibility study because we didn't want to pivot where we were doing. You know, we, we were making good money with our one company. We didn't want to pivot into this too quickly is what we thought. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we knew from the size of the companies we were dealing with, we knew that it was bigger manufacturing companies that had the complexity. Yeah. And then we had some new salespeople come in and immediately started taking us, uh, taking us in the wrong direction. Like, oh, I know so-and-so over here that could use it. And I would go to those early meetings and find out they couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely something that we, we ran into early. Okay. So as we kind of round this out... Once again, if you want to, I don't think we mentioned, you can, I said we went live on Instagram. You should maybe go to at Startup Hustle Podcast to see where we went live. Um, (laughs) You guys are available online at command.app. Is that correct? That's correct. And in a whole bunch of app stores, like if there's an app store, it sounds like you guys are in it. (laughs) Um, And that's good. So, you know, and by the way, if you want to check out some of the other stuff that Matt and I do, Matt's the CEO and founder of Stackify which helps things find problems with yeah. other things. Maybe even somebody like Command App can mm-hmm. use Stackify. Code that checks code. Also, you can yeah. check out Gigabook if you want to take online appointments for your services, groups, or resources. Now, what's in the future for you guys? What's next? So Tell, uh, tell us what's about to be even more awesome. <clears throat> Sales are going to skyrocket after listening to this podcast. Every I, without time. a doubt. Every time. Without it's a doubt. like Shark Tank. Yes, Bump. it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna con- continue to <laughs> continue to keep grinding, and uh, this is worth at least five million dollars worth of exposure. Just yeah, like Shark Tank. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's gotta be. It's gotta be. We might be at like four point three. Okay, yeah. um, just keep grinding, um, finding those companies that need our help, and like like Brett and I said at the beginning, we created the platform to help companies, and that's re- what it really comes down to. Everybody is struggling in some way to get some type of sales material or marketing material to their teams, either in their own city, across the country, and we have clients across the globe. So being able to deploy the sales material, deploy the marketing information out, um, we're just going to keep grinding. And we're really focusing, like you said earlier, on trade shows right now because it's a good entry point for us because there's a decision maker, there's a budget, and there's one person to, um, to make the call and a deadline. So uh, typically what we've shown in the past is, okay, we get this launched really easy to get on board, <clears throat> get your sales teams using it in the booth, and more often than not, the sales teams will say, man, why the hell don't we have this out in the field? Yeah, no, I agree with you. So, and once again, 
as we round out this episode of Startup Hustle. Um, I mean, when you guys first told me about this, I was like, dude, where was this when I needed it? I think it's a great <laughs> idea. I love what you guys are doing. I think anything that makes the sales process more streamlined. And I mean, not only because look, your clients and your buyers and your users, they all want it to be streamlined too. They don't want it to take any longer. They're not like, God, I really wish the sales process would take longer because <laughs> I don't have anything else to do. Speaking of which, I do have some other things that I need to do. So we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Thank you.